Dr. Robert Earle is a practicing cosmetic dentist. Throughout the years, he has seen developments in cosmetic dentistry, but Lumineers is the only veneers procedure that Dr. Earle would allow to be done on himself. Dr. Earle desired a wider, more prominent smile. He was mainly concerned with adding length to his upper arch so his teeth would be more visible when he smiled. Upon Dr. Earle's smile evaluation, observations included misalignment, slight diastemas, and discoloration. His intraoral evaluation concluded adequate candidacy for the procedure with normal temporomandibular condition, no traumatic incisal relationships, and a good standing of periodontal health. Determined by the width of his smile, Dr. Earle's treatment plan included the placement of eight lumineers from bicuspid to bicuspid. He chose shade B1 for permanent whitening, and no cosmetic contouring was necessary. And she's got everything set up on this table here. She's pre-treated the porcelain with porcelain conditioner, which is what? Citric acid. And then we follow that with Serenade Prime. And that way your silane is activated right just minutes, half hour or so before we place these veneers. And uh, first thing we're going to do is put some paint on dental dam on the lingual surface of his teeth. We're going to prevent the uh, ultra bond in the tenure from bonding to the lingual side. And the purpose of that is to facilitate cleanup. And uh, we're going to begin the process by putting etch and seal on the natural teeth and then brushing that around. The reason I use etch and seal is 35% phosphoric acid with aluminum oxalate. So you can use it on your ordinary, everyday operative procedures. And if you get it on the dentin, then the aluminum oxalate helps seal the dentinal tubules to prevent sensitivity. And what you want to look at here is that frosty look. And I'll let everybody see what the paint on dental dam looks like on the back side. See that? And uh, we're applying tenure AB. Remember, once you prepared that surface with the 10-year AB and they etched it, then you can contaminate it with moisture. And this is 10-year S that I'm putting on now. I'm blowing the excess off now because I don't want the 10-year S to be thick and polymerized and prevent the lumineers from seeding. Left central. Right central. Need a brush here to remove the excess. Right cuspid. Uh, we never use pumice. We always use the porcelain polishing paste. And we do that because it has an enzyme in there to get rid of the plaque on the teeth. Because plaque, as you know, is like grease. It's an organic material. I'm going to take some of this off here. Close your eyes. And I'm going to spot cure each tooth that has a luminaire and see a little excess coming out. And that'll prevent these from slipping down. Close your eyes. Okay. I didn't do that to that left lateral. And the reason I didn't is that I want to stay one tooth away from the tooth that I'm going to be putting on there. The brush. I want to just get there. I got to pay real close attention here on this. Close your eyes. And close your eyes. And close your eyes. And I'm going to take this excess off. And we'll 
I'll take the brush and I'll start removing the excess. So close your eyes. And when I brush that ultrabond from the gingival toward the incisal, I always come from the gingival up to make sure it fills the space between the porcelain and the tooth. So when we get finished, we have one homogeneous mass. And we're going to take the Shear 349 instrument. We'll use it for removing the ultrabond off the labial surface. And we'll take some of this out of here. And where we had the tenure S, it's beginning to polymerize. And uh, that's pretty well cleaned up in that area. So now we're going to take football shaped diamond and we're going to blend the ultrabond, the serenade porcelain and the tooth all together. And all of these instruments are in the Lumineers finishing kit. I'm just blending it and this is where four power magnification is so important. And uh, if you if you treated the surface of the teeth first with etching agent and uh, tenure, and then you put the uh, paint on dental dam on it, it would bond pretty securely to that surface, which you don't want it to do. Now I'm using a Sure 349 instrument here. We checked the margins this morning, and they all fit uh, and on the teeth. Now I'm going to take a 12 fluted burr. Once in a while, we don't get a contact open on the placement visit, and we open it on the subsequent visit. But the patient will be able to floss today. So all of our margins are created with the porcelain, the ultrabond, and the tenure, and the tooth. And they are one solid fused mass. And that's how we get that great margin. So now I come back with my Shear 349. It will never scratch the glazed surface. I'm going to try to get back into these cuspids and bicuspid areas. So I'm going to take a longer uh, finishing diamond here, right here, and go to the interproximal. And I start opening that. This is where four power is critical. And now I'm going on the lingual side and just following the embrasure. Let's do occlusion. Grind around a little bit now. Now what you want to look out for is getting any marks on the porcelain that are heavy. I don't know if you can see on this lateral here, but we've got a mark there. And this lateral would probably like to get it knocked off. Now I'm going to open the contact, the seri saw. Now just look at this. I'm coming through here. Now I've run into a little resistance, like an icebreaker. See that? So instead of sawing and putting pressure, I gently rock and keep pressure on it. And that keeps me from slipping and cutting the gingival tissue. And I don't do all my finishing on this visit because Dr. Earl and I were talking about patients and how they get tired after they sit in the chair for an hour, hour and a half. So I'm going to open this contact on a, on a follow-up visit. Now we're going to take a seri sander, okay? And that gets rid of the rough edges that are left behind on the ultrabond. And I don't know if you can hear this. And we do the same thing. I'll let you take a peek here now, Dr. Earl. Wow. Wow. This is how much we've transformed the patient in the last, oh, half hour. Uh, I've been practicing in Las Vegas for about 31 years now and uh, have been doing a lot of veneer cases probably for the last 15 years, uh, a lot of full mouth cases, but in the last, oh, nine months, we've <coughs> started to do lumineer cases uh, because of my interest in having these done for myself. After having practiced for this many years and doing so many cosmetic cases, people would look at me and say, well, let me see your smile. And I would always be very, very reluctant to smile because my smile didn't look very good. So I was very, very anxious to get this done, mainly because it, it showed 
you know, to my patients that if I was willing to do it on myself, then I'm confident that it's something that I would want to do for them. It was almost an instantaneous uh, feeling of I can now smile. And, and now it's been a total transformation for me to be able to smile and laugh and feel comfortable about the way my teeth look when I do that.